going on everybody? Chris here from Project Option and in this video we're going to talk about delta hedging. So at this point you know that delta represents the directional risk or the directional exposure of an option or a stock position. So in this video we're going to talk about hedging that risk. Let's dive right into it. So what is delta hedging? Well at this point you know that delta represents the directional risk of a stock or option position. Now in the trading world, the term hedging refers to reducing risk. So when we put those two terms together, we learn that delta hedging is a practice of reducing directional or delta risk. So delta hedging is a defensive tactic used to reduce the directional exposure of a stock or option position. Now delta hedging is done by adding a position that brings the position delta closer to zero. So if you have a positive position delta and you want to reduce that risk, you're going to have to add positions with negative delta to bring that position delta closer to zero. And the opposite is true if you have a negative position delta. So let's go ahead and look at a few examples. So in the following example positions, we have you know, position A, position B, and position C. Now each of these positions has their own respective directional exposure. So let's look at position A. So position A has a position delta of plus 250. Now that means if the stock price increases by $1, the expected profit on that position is $250. Now if the stock decreases by $1, the expected loss on that position is negative 250. Now let's go ahead and look at position B. Position B has a delta of negative 3700. Now that means if the stock price increases by $1, position B is expected to lose $3,700. Now if the stock price falls by $1, position B, having a negative position delta, is expected to profit by $3,700. So let's say a trader has on one of these positions and they want to reduce their directional risk by reducing their position delta, but they don't want to completely take off that initial position. Let's go ahead and look at how a trader could implement a delta hedge to reduce the directional risk of an option position. So the following table shows you different strategies that you can use to reduce the directional or delta risk of an existing position. So in the left hand column, let's look at strategies you can use to reduce the directional risk of a negative delta position. So if you have a position with negative deltas, you're expected to lose money when the stock price increases and make money when the stock price falls. So to hedge that position, you need to add a strategy that profits when the stock price increases and loses money when the stock price decreases, which will offset that existing position. So if you have a position with negative deltas, you can hedge that position with long stock, long calls, short puts, long call spreads, and short put spreads. Now all of those strategies are positive delta strategies, which means if you implement them on top of a negative delta strategy, the overall directional risk of that position will decrease. Now let's look at, let's look at the right hand column. So the right hand column shows you strategies you can use to hedge a positive delta position. So you can use short stock, long puts, short calls, short call spreads, or long put spreads. Now all of those strategies have negative deltas which means if you implement those strategies on top of a positive delta position, the overall delta of that position will decrease and you'll therefore have less directional risk. So now that you know the basic theory behind delta hedging, let's go ahead and look at some real examples. So let's say you have on a position with a position delta of negative 3700. Now that means if the stock price increases by $1, you're expected to lose $3,700 and if the stock price falls by $1, you're expected to make $3,700. Now let's say you want to cut that position delta in half and reduce your directional exposure by 50%. So to do that, you're going to have to add a strategy that cuts your position delta in half. So since the initial position delta is negative 3,700, 50% of that would be negative 1,850. So to effectively cut this position's delta in half, you're going to have to add a strategy that adds 1850 deltas. So one strategy you can use is buying stock. Now since each share of stock has a position delta of plus one, you're going to need to buy 1850 shares to cut the negative 3700 delta in half. 
Now this is because if you buy 1,850 shares, if the stock price increases by $1, you're gonna make $1,850 on your long shares, and if the stock falls by $1, you're gonna lose $1,850. So on the bottom table, we're looking at the combination of these two positions. So if the stock price increases by $1, your initial position is going to lose $3,700, but your long stock hedge is going to gain $1,850. And the net result is a loss of $1,850. Now, if the stock price falls by $1, your negative 3,700 delta position is, gonna, is going to profit by $3,700, and your long stock position is going to lose $1,850. So the net result in that case is a profit of $1,850. So by delta hedging the initial position by 50%, the expected profit or loss in one direction either way is 50% of what you would expect if you did not add the hedge. So before, if the stock price increased by a dollar, we're expected to lose $3,700. And if the stock price fell by one dollar, we're expected to gain $3,700. By cutting that position delta in half with a long stock hedge, our new expected P&L is negative $1,850 for a $1 share increase and plus $1,850 for a $1 share decrease. So let's go ahead and look at a real delta hedging example of long shares and a long put hedge against those shares. So the initial position is going to be long 500 shares. Now if you buy 500 shares of stock, your position delta is plus 500. Now to hedge that position, we're going to buy five put contracts, and the position delta of those puts is going to be negative 175. So the net position delta initially is plus 325. So let's go ahead and look at what happens to the shares of stock and the long puts after they're implemented. So in the very top of this graph, we're looking at the price of the stock through time after the long shares and the long puts are entered. In the middle of the graph, we're looking at the profit and loss of the long shares and the long put. And in the bottom part of the graph, we're looking at the combined profit and loss of the shares and the long puts. So as we can see here, the stock price falls from $210 down to around $185. Now, when that move happens, of course, the long 500 shares lose a lot of money. At the lowest point, the long stock position is down around $10,000. But since those long puts have negative deltas, they actually gain value as the stock price decreases, which offsets the losses on the long shares. So on the very bottom, we can see that when the stock price falls from $210 to around $185, the loss on the combined position is less than $4,000. However, if you look at the middle part of the graph, you can see the loss on the long stock position is greater than $10,000. So by implementing a long put hedge against the long shares, the investor in this case would have significantly reduced their loss potential when the stock price decreased. However, since the long puts reduce the deltas, that means the investor in this case has less profit potential if the stock price increases. So the cost of hedging your deltas is that you have less profit potential when your position goes in your way, but you have less loss potential when the trade goes against you. So in this graph, we're looking at the combined position delta of the long shares and the long puts. Now, a long stock position of 500 shares will always have a position delta of plus 500. That does not change no matter what the stock does. However, as you know, option deltas do change when the stock price changes. In this case, we purchased puts with an initial delta of negative 0.35, but as the stock price falls, that put delta gets closer to negative one. So as we can see here, when the stock price falls and is below the long put strike of 205, the puts actually, the put deltas actually get more and more negative. Now near the end of the period, the puts are in the money, which means they have a position delta of negative 100 per contract. And since we own five contracts in this case, the negative position delta of those five puts is close to negative 500. Now, since the long stock position of 500 shares has a position delta of plus 500, we can see that the combined position delta approaches zero closer and closer to the put's expiration date.
So let's go ahead and look at another example, but this time we're going to look at short stock combined with long calls. So the initial position is a short stock position of negative 300 shares. So negative 300 shares means the position delta is minus 300. Now let's say we buy three call options with initial deltas of 0 0.30. The position deltas of those calls is going to be plus 90, which brings our net position delta of both positions to negative 210. So right off the bat, by adding a long delta position, which is the long calls, against our negative delta position of being short shares, we reduce our directional exposure. Now let's see what happens to this position through time as the stock price changes. Now as we can see here, the stock price actually ends up increasing steadily over this period. So since we're short stock, we would expect the short stock position to perform very poorly as the stock price is increasing. However, since we own three call options against the short stock position, those call options are going to increase in value as the stock price increases because they have positive deltas. So in the middle graph here, we can see that as the stock price increases, the short stock position actually reaches a loss near $30,000, which is an extremely sizable loss. However, since the stock price is increasing, those long call options actually increase in value by a little over $10,000. So in the bottom part of the graph, we see the combined profit and loss of the short shares and the long calls as a hedge. Now as we can see, the combined profit and loss never reached a value lower than negative $17,500. But we know that the short shares alone reached a loss around $30,000. So by implementing the hedge, we effectively reduce the loss on the short shares by 50%. So like we did before, let's look at the position delta of each position and also the combined position. So at the very beginning, the short stock position of 300 shares has a position delta of negative 300. Now that never changes no matter what the stock price does, as long as you're short 300 shares of stock. However, we did purchase three call options with a beginning position delta of plus 90, which brought our combined position delta to negative 210. Now as we can see here, as the stock price increases, the delta of the calls actually increased as well, reaching a value of plus 300. So as the stock price was increasing, the call deltas were increasing as well, which means the calls were becoming a more and more effective hedge against our short shares of stock. All right, so that covers the basics of delta hedging. Let's go ahead and summarize the main points you've learned in this video, just so you can solidify that knowledge. So first and foremost, delta hedging is a practice used to reduce the directional risk of a stock or option position. Now to hedge a positive delta position, a negative delta strategy must be added to the, to the position to bring the overall delta closer to zero. And to hedge a negative delta position, a positive delta strategy must be added to the position to bring the overall delta closer to zero again. So when you're delta hedging, the goal is to reduce your deltas and bring that position delta closer to zero. And lastly, delta hedging can be very effective at reducing risk, but of course that reduction in risk comes at the cost of lower profit potential on the original position when it goes your way. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you learned something about reducing your directional risk through delta hedging. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel right now so that you get all of our future videos as they are released.